Live. Baragani, everybody. Hallelujah. This is what I'm thinking I'm on God's couple of blessings. <laughs> Let me get it right. All right. Baragani, which means in Swahili, what's the news? The news today is <coughs> welcome to Satora's Black History Corner. I'm your host, Catherine Hunter Williams, along with my co host, Miss Catherine Blake. Hello, everybody. Today, um, Miss B is going to tell our story about Vinette Carroll, mm -hmm. who was the first American black woman to direct on on the on a Broadway, Broadway. theater in New York City. And then I'm going to tell our story about a man you rarely hear about, but who was also in the civil rights movement, Reverend Dr. Fred Shuttleworth. All right. Worth. But before we go, I got a, another little story I want to tell you about, uh, right quick, about what's going on up in Canada. Canada. Our neighbor to the north. Yeah. Okay, her name is Viola Desmond. And she was born July 6, 1914, in Halifax, Nova Scotia. And she was a Canadian black. Nova Scotian businesswoman who challenged racial segregation at a film theater in New Glasgow, Nova Scotia in 1946. Mm. She refused to leave a whites only area of the Roseland Theater, I remember them days myself, <laughs> and was unjustly convicted of a minor tax violation used to enforce segregation. Desmond's case is one of the most publicized incidents, really, of racial discrimination in Canada's Canadian history and helped start the modern civil rights movement in Canada. See, she reminds me of someone else in this city that wouldn't get out of, not this city, but in this country, mm -hmm. that refused to get up out of her seat. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. In 2010, Desmond was granted a post-humanist Pardon, the first to be granted in Canada. This is a woman who has done a first period. The government of Nova government of Nova Scotia also apologized for prosecuting her for tax evasion and acknowledged she was rightfully resisting racial discrimination. Ain't that something? In 2016, the Bank of Canada announced that Desmond will be the first Canadian woman and black woman to be featured featured on the front of a bank note. Wow. She is slated to appear on the ten dollar bill in two thousand eighteen. Wow, that's and big the picture news. you see, yeah, the picture you see uh uh that John has up has uh the bill that she's gonna be on. And the picture you see is the picture they're gonna use. And to me they took what we did here with Harriet Tubman and uh what's her name? Sojourner Truth and some others and put them Mm -hmm. On uh, 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 bank notes or dollars, bills, twenty dollars, ten dollars. Uh, here in this country, they started that last year, the year before, and so it got passed. And now, our, like I say, our neighbors to the to north, the north. is I say they copycat. <laughs> but wherever they do it at, if they put us on a dollar bill or a five dollar twenty dollar bill that's so awesome and yes it is it's a woman a woman now they haven't put any black men on the uh on bank notes yet or money not yet but i think martin they have a coin out for martin luther king i think john is it one more that they have a coin out i think it's only martin ain't it they do have a u.s bond too yeah they got their united uh -huh. states bond but uh, I don't know nothing about. I think it's, he's on a coin. I know that. Mm. So you never know about that. Uh, uh, they might start putting black men on it. First time I seen a black man on on a, on a some on a money was in Egypt when I went over there and I bought a whole bunch of it back because I wanted people to see. See, they put black people on money because <laughs> <laughs> I had never seen that in my life. So. Now we finna get to see it here in America, and now they're doing it in Canada. That's Viola Desmond, and she died February 7, 1965, at the age of 50 years old. She was a very young woman, and she died in New York City, New York. Mm. All right. All right, Miss B. Well, going back to New York, 
Uh, this is about Miss Vonette Carroll. She was the Broadway's first black female director. She was born March 11, 1922, and she passed November 5th, 2002, at the age of 80. Uh, from heart disease and complications with diabetes. Oh. Yeah. She was, uh, her mother and father, um, Florence and Edgar Carroll. And at the age of three, her family moved to Jamaica, mm -hmm. where Carroll spent most of her childhood in the West Indies. She attended Long Island University and received a bachelor's degree. She later received the MA and a New York at New York University. She was a PhD candidate in uh, psychology at Columbia University but decided to pursue a career in acting and did not finish her doctoral degree. Now Carol worked as a clinical psychologist with the New York City Bureau of Child Guidance before pursuing her acting. Oh. And then, mm -hmm. Okay. So in 1948, she accepted the scholarship to attend the Irwin Piscator Dramatic Workshop at the New School for Social Research and studied with Lee Strasberg, Stella Aldermeyer, Alder, Adler, I'm sorry, and Margaret Baker and Susan Steele. I got a question though. Mm -hmm. Did, uh, when she got the acting bug, was she a little girl or a teenager? No, this this was uh she was in her twenties. Okay, yeah, she was a woman. Because she was in college. Okay. Yeah, and she was out of college, as a matter of fact. Okay. She because she had her, uh, she was working on degrees. Yeah. Mm hmm. And she made her professional stage debut at the Falmouth Playhouse, acting in Andrickles and the Lion. Her Broadway acting debut came in 1956 when she appeared at the revival of a streetcar named Desire. And in 19... Oh, she was on that? Uh-huh. Oh, okay. Oh, wait till you hear some of the other things that she's been in. Oh. <clears throat> and in 1967, she uh, founded the Urban Arts Corps in New York City, an organization assisting minority performers in all the theatrical disciplines. And in 1972, Carol began her collaboration with the songwriter Mickey Grant. And she became the first African American woman to direct a production on Broadway when Don't Bother Me, I Can't Cope opened at the Playhouse Theater. And that was nominated for four Tony Awards. Mm -hmm. She said she win any or she was just nominated. nominated. Uh, she set the tone for professional and theatrical arts, especially for black professionals in the industry. And as a playwright, expression of identity through gospel music was an essential aspect of her work. And she helped to develop a new form of theater, the gospel song play. And in order to capture the richness of the variety of life through music, theater and dance and her theatrical work was about the reaffirmation of life and people and she aimed to provide a voice to African Americans and other minority communities that had been culturally and artistically silenced. Uh, due to the shortage of roles, Carol created a one-woman show and she toured the U.S. and the West Indies. She won the Obie Award for her role in Errol John's Moon on a Rainbow Shawl. And in 1964, she won an Emmy, she Emmy, one, huh? Emmy Award mm -hmm. for Beyond the Blues, which dramatized the works of black poets. <clears throat> okay. Uh, along with Mickey Grant and Alex Bradford in 1976, the successful Your Arms Are Too Short box. box With God. God. Everybody heard about that. Yeah, but I didn't know it was a black woman. Yes. Okay. She got three Tony nominations for that Was one. it a song out with that, yep. that mm -hmm. tune? Yep. Okay. And as an actress in 1967, she appeared in the Up 
up the down staircase. She appeared remember that one. in 1964, Alice's Restaurant. Okay, but she must have had small parts. Small parts. Okay, because yeah. I don't recall her. Well, you know how it was back then mm -hmm. in those days. It, it's but hard she, to but get. She, she was in those plays. Did she right. do some? Uh, hold on. Okay. Uh, and in 1998, she was also in The Last Home Run. Now, the what she directed, Okay. she was a director. In 1965, she directed The Prodigal. Give the money. That's right. what the producers do. Yeah. That's what they do. Yeah, she didn't get all that money. Yeah. Prodigal Son. In 1961, she directed The Black Nativity. 1972, oh. she directed Don't Bother Me, I Can't Cope. Mm -hmm. 1973, Desire Under the Elms. 1976, Your Arms Are Too Short to Box with God. 1979, uh, But Never Jam Today. All right, she did win. Oh, hold on. The Tony, that was what, okay. But this was something I thought was very interesting for back in the day. Uh, do you all remember All in the Family, the TV show with Archie Bunker? With Archie Bunker. All right. Racist Archie Bunker. <laughs> then they did a black one, George. Yes. Uh, what is that? Uh, we moving on, on up. up. Yeah. yeah. The Jeffersons. The Jeffersons. Well, in season seven, in episode one and episode two, uh, there was a time where uh, Archie Bunker had to have uh, uh, black gallbladder surgery, and his doctor was Dr. Seymour Shapiro, who had an assistant who was called uh, Dr. Thatcher, who was Miss Carol. And black. And black. Oh, my oh God. but the thing about it was, was that Archie Bunker had to have a blood transfusion. And it was from a black woman? And it was from a black woman from the West Indies. Cause she <laughs> played. And so you can imagine how that story went. I know that story. But it was, it was a good story. And uh, he did take the blood. <laughs> <laughs> uh, he wanted to live, huh? Because he, she had his exact type. Yeah. So that is our story about Miss Vonnie Carroll, <laughs> and I hope you enjoyed it because I sure did. <laughs> oh, that's right. It was that's interesting because I didn't know that a black woman had directed those plays. Yeah. She didn't necessarily write them, but she did the play. Right. She directed. And the reason I asked you about when did she? wanted that she knew that she wanted to be in that field is because I did an act mm -hmm. I was, uh, uh, in this play that they produced called uh, oh I forgot the name of it, but it was at New Jerusalem oh okay and I was sweet potato and you know you, you have to actually get into the character yeah yeah so sweet potato to me was sweet you know she mm -hmm. was sweet and sassy and so the false eyelashes and everything, and I learned how to ad lib mm -hmm. uh, because my eyelash fell off. <laughs> <laughs> so I had told, I had told the the judge that was over here that uh, Lord, look what she done did, made my eyelash fall off. And I just bedded my. Eye. <laughs> but it was a good play, and that's when I kind of got bugged. Mm -hmm. But then I left it alone. But. I think I would have been a pretty good actor. Well, I was in high school. Uh, I was in a couple of plays in, at, at Northwestern High. And uh, then uh, there was uh, 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 someone around. I can't even remember who it was. But I was in another play. It was called A Nickel on the Wine. Mm -hmm. And I played a, a drunk woman. <laughs> and I did it pretty well. <laughs> Is acting. It's yeah, it was all acting. acting. It's not so hard. I mm -mm. Think about it. Well, I I, I was offered a chance because they they took that play on the road, mm -hmm. and I, I was going through some crazy things in my life at the time, and I couldn't go on the road. Mm -hmm. But I really would have loved to have gone. Yeah. And because that was opening up doors for me, you know. And it was fun. Yeah, it was fun. It's actually fun, you know. Uh, I look at these actors and these actresses and mm -hmm. watch them when they be doing their thing a lot of them be doing their own stunts and I don't think I want to do that but I like being sassy and mm -hmm. fancy you know mm -hmm. uh, I remember when they did it they 
they, well, it was a weekend of honoring me mm -hmm. at New Jerusalem, and they had a woman to uh, portray me. Oh, really? Yeah. Wow. That's something to what do. What an there. honor. It was, and then they gave me a plaque and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. But she got up there, and, and she did me. Okay, okay. She did me some of me, you know. Okay. It was a very interesting weekend, and I had a ball doing it and, and trying to memorize my lines. That's the mm -hmm. biggest part. And uh, ad living and, and being sweet potato. Mm. But to be on potato, Broadway in New York, that's. Ooh. That would have been something exciting. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Broadway in New York. Because they say you done made it when you get on Broadway. Oh, right? yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay, that's big time. That's big time. All right. Okay, let's move on. Amen. Forward. That was an interesting story, though, especially with Archie Bunker. <laughs> and, then, you know, today they still can see George Jefferson. Right. And you know George, is he's still a racist guy. He is really something. <laughs> you know, because his uh, daughter-in-law striped zebra. Yeah. <laughs> he's something. And they let him get away with it, you know. And they, they're not politically correct because he still calls... Uh, them nigga this and nigga that so it's no politically correct right here. right but I, that that's that picture that series mm -hmm. has been gone a long time but they still run it you mm -hmm. know because George mm -hmm. George Jefferson and his wife Wheezy so if y'all can check them out sometime check them out yeah it's called the Jefferson and we move it on up moving on up so some of us do say that you mm -hmm. know? We get a house on the south side, <laughs> move it on up. Okay, let's move forward to Dr. Um, Reverend Dr. Frederick Lee, Fred Shuttleworth. He's a man that you know, you very rarely hear about, but he was also in the civil rights movement. Mm. And he went through a lot of things that a lot of people don't know that he went through as well as Martin did. And my next guest I'm going to talk about uh, is going to be um, Dr. Reverend Abernathy. Amen. It's a book they got out called The Walls Come Tumbling Down. And I mean, there's some interesting points in that book. He kind of tells it all and then he died. <laughs> you know. But anyway, I want to tell a story about him. Uh, Frederick Lee Fred Shuttleworth was born Fred Lee Robinson, March 18, 1922. In Mount Meigs, Alabama. He was a United States civil rights activist who led the fight against segregation and other forms of racism as a minister in Birmingham. You know, we don't have that anymore. Is anybody, I mean, actually being a true civil rights activist today? Uh, I don't think we have nobody do it. I mean, you know, not like they, they had the marches and they still got the marches, but not quite. Like going this. through what they were, yeah. Yeah, what they went through. Because he, he has a story here. I'm not joking. Um, he was the co-founder of the Southern Christian Leadership Conference, initiated and was instrumental in the 1963 Birmingham, which they called Birmingham, campaign and continued to work against racism and for alleviation of the problems of the homeless in Cincinnati, Ohio, where he took up a pastorate in 1961. He returned to Birmingham, Alabama after his retirement in 2007 and he helped Martin Luther King Jr. during the Civil Rights Movement. The Birmingham Shuttleworths International Airport was named in his honor in 2008. Hmm. Uh, Shuttleworth became a pastor of Bethel Baptist Church in Birmingham in 1953 and was a was, uh, was membership chairman of the Alabama State Chapter of the National Association for Advancement of the Co of Colored People. Are they still meeting here in Flint? Mm -hmm. Do you still go there? I well, you know, I, it's hard for me to do anything anymore about me taking care of my mom. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. In 1956, when the state of Alabama formally outlawed it from operating in the state within the state. Mm. In May 1956, Shuttleworth and Ed Garner established the Alabama Christian Movement for Human Rights to take up the work formerly done by the NAACP. See, they was banned. They was outlawed. They could not. 
mm. uh, worked there. Do the NAACP was not allowed in Birmingham, Alabama. Wow. So, but look, what he did, he started. Uh, he established the Alabama Christian Movement for Human Rights to take up the work formerly done by the NAACP. So he still was marching on. Mm -hmm. On December 25th, 1956, unknown persons tried to kill Shuttleworth by placing 16 sticks of dynamite under his bedroom. Oh room. my goodness. But they did the same thing to Martin. Remember, he, they bombed yep. his house. Yep. They bombed Malcolm X's house. Yes, yeah. Uh, Shuttleworth somehow escaped unhurt, even though his house was heavily damaged. A police officer who also belonged to the Ku Klux Klan told Shuttleworth as he came out of his home, if I were you, I'd get out of town as quick as I could. Shuttleworth told him to tell the Klan that he was not leaving and I wasn't raised to run. <laughs> He's sticking to it, man. In 1957, Shuttleworth, along with Martin Luther King Jr., Ralph Abernathy, Abernathy from Montgomery, Joseph Lowry from Mobile, Alabama. I met him. Did you? Yeah, Joseph Lowry. Okay. Mm -hmm. You gonna tell us some more about him? Where you meet him at? Oh, <laughs> I met him at a conference. Okay. Uh, T.J. Jimson from Baton Rouge, Louisiana. Charles Kinsey Steele from Tallahassee, Florida. Florida. A.L. Davis from New Orleans, Louisiana. Bayard Rustin and Ella Baker. And you have talked about mm -hmm. Ella Baker on here. Founder of the Southern Christian Leadership Conference. Mm -hmm. The SCLC adopted a model to underscore its commitment to nonviolence. Now one hair of one head of one person should be high. And you know, uh, you remember our Reverend Douglas, Jesse Douglas, who was our pastor at one time? Where? At the church on Pearson Road? No. When you at the church on Pearson Road? No. Uh-uh. Oh, down here on Saginaw Street? Mm-hmm. Doja. Okay. He was our pastor. He was the Southern Christian Leadership Conference secretary back then in those days. Oh. Yeah. Okay. He was the secretary. Mm. Yeah, if we got to fight sometime, it, it, I don't know, sometime, let me shut up. Well, we did a, a historical piece on him when he was here. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to talk about our pastors here in Flint. <laughs> but, you know, they get out when they have to get out. They do what they have to do when they do. But... Sunday. They got a kind of bad rep. People talk about them pretty badly. Shuttleworth embraced that philosophy even though his own personality was combative. Uh, headstrong and sometimes blunt spoken to the point that he frequently antagonized his colleagues <laughs> in the civil rights movement. He probably was, uh, let's do more. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, oh yeah, he was. He was not shy in asking King to take more active roles <laughs> in leading the fight against segregation and warning that history would not look kindly on those who gave flowery speeches mm -hmm. he messed with that man. But he did not act on them. He alienated some members in his congregation by devoting as much time as he did to the movement at the expense of weddings, funerals, and other ordinary church function. I guess he thought this was a little bit more important. Mm -hmm. As a result, in 1961, Shuttleworth moved to Cincinnati, Ohio to take up pastorage of the Revelation Baptist Church and he remained intensely involved in the Birmingham campaign even after moving to Cincinnati mm. and frequently, re frequently returned to help others help, help lead actions. Shuttleworth was apparently personally Fearless, even though he was aware of the risk he ran. Fearless. Sometimes it takes that kind of person. Mm -hmm. You know, just saying, I ain't scared. Other committed activists were scared off <laughs> or mystified by the willing, his willingness to accept the risk of death. Because sometimes people will say, um, I would die for this cause. And that's him. Mm -hmm. He would die for it. He wasn't scared to die. Shuttleworth himself vowed to kill segregation or be killed by it. He wasn't afraid. Mm -mm. When Shuttleworth and his wife Ruby attempted to enroll their children in a previously all-white public school 
in Birmingham in 1957. Oh, wow. A mob of Klansmen attacked them with the police nowhere to be seen. His assailants included Bobby Frank Cherry, who six years later was involved in the 16th Street Baptist Church bombing. That's when they start calling Birmingham yeah, bombing him. The mob beat Shuttleworth with, his, with chains and brass knuckles in the street while someone stabbed his wife. Shuttleworth drove himself and his wife to the hospital where he told his kids to always forgive. In 1958, Shuttleworth survived another attempt on his life. A church member standing guard saw a bomb and quickly moved it to the street before it went off. They tried to kill him one day. <laughs> they wasn't playing with him. They were ready to get him. But I heard Mississippi was worse than Birmingham. Mississippi was the hardest state to let the black people go. Mississippi was something. Shuttleworth par participated in the city. And if y'all, oh, let me go back to Mississippi. Find some history out about the civil rights movement down in Mississippi. I think Mississippi is the worst than any of any of those states that was down there against black people. Mm. Birmingham though was the bombing ham. They bombed everything, but they did a lot of different things to black people down there in Mississippi. Just buy you some history books on that. There's some stuff out there. I had to, some books I got at the house I had to put down because yeah. you just fill it down in you, you know. Mm -hmm. Wow. Mm -hmm. Shuttleworth participated in the city is against segregated lunch counters in 1960. See, I didn't know that. And took part in the organization and completion of the Freedom Rides in 1961. Shuttleworth originally warned that Alabama was extremely violent, mm. volatile when he was consulted before the Freedom Riders began. <clears throat> After it became certain that the Freedom Rides, rides were, go, were, be, were to be carried out, Shuttleworth worked work with the Congress of Racial Equality to uh, organize the rise. That's CORE. And I think that's James Farmer who founded that. CO, yep, that's CORE. Uh, and became engaged with ensuing the success of the rise, especially during their stint in Alabama. Shuttleworth uh, mobilized some of his fellow clergy to assist the rise. After the riders were badly beaten and nearly killed in Birmingham and Anniston during the rise, he sent deacons to pick up riders from the hospital in Anniston. He himself had been brutalized earlier in the day and had faced down the threat of being thrown out of the hospital by the hospital superintendent. Shuttleworth took in the freedom riders at the Bethel Baptist Church, allowing them to recuperate after the violence that had occurred earlier. We did a story of it's been a while ago about the Freedom Riders. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. The violence in Anniston and Birmingham almost led to a quick end to the Freedom Ride. However, the actions of supporters like Shuttleworth gave James Farmer here, yeah, the leader of CORE, which had originally organized the Freedom Rides and other activists, activists the courage to press forward. Mm. After the violence that occurred in Alabama, but before the Freedom Riders could move on, Attorney General Robert Kennedy gave Shuttleworth his personal phone number in case the Freedom Riders really federal support. Yeah, I do remember that. Yep, I sure do. Yep. When Shuttleworth prepared the Riders to leave Birmingham and they reached the Greyhound Terminal, the Riders found themselves stranded as no bus driver was willing to drive the controversial group into Mississippi. <laughs> <laughs> Mississippi was deep. Shuttleworth stuck with the riders and called Kennedy. Prompt by Shuttleworth, uh, Kennedy tried to find a replacement bus driver. Unfortunately, his efforts eventually proved unsuccessful. They know how they had set the buses on fire. Mm -hmm. Bombed and them. Had, and, yeah. Yeah, and, and, and beat the people. Mm -hmm. The riders then decided to take a plane to New Orleans where they had planned to finish the rides and were assisted by Shuttleworth in getting to the airport and onto the airplane. Shuttleworth's commitment to the Freedom Rides were highlighted by Diane Nash, yeah. who told a story, our story about her, and a student activist in Nashville, student violent and a major, major organizer of the later Waves Arrive. Nash noted Fred was practically legend. 
And I think it was important for me, definitely for a city of people who were carrying on a movement, for there is to be somebody that represents strength. And that's certainly what Fred did. He would not back down and you could count on it. He would not sell out and you could count on that. The students involved in the rides appreciated Shuttleworth's commitment to the principles of the Freedom Ride, ending the segregation laws of Jim Crow. Shuttleworth's fervent passion for equality made him a role model to many Freedom Riders. In 1965, he was active in the Selma voting rights movement and its march from Selma to Montgomery which led to the passage of the Voting Rights Act in 1965. It hasn't been that long, y'all, that we had mm -hmm. the right to vote. Shuttleworth thus played a role in the efforts that led to the passage of two great legislative accomplishments of the Civil Rights Movement. In later years, he took part in the commemorative activities in Selma at the time of the anniversary of the famous march, and he returned to St. Augustine in 2004 to take part in the celebration of the 40th anniversary of St. Augustine after that. And there's so much more that he, uh, Reverend Dr. Fred Shuttleworth did. You could go on the internet and just type in his name and find out the information that's called, I got it from what is called Black America Web. Uh, Dr., I mean, for, uh, Reverend Dr. Fred Shuttleworth, mm -hmm. Frederick Lee Fred Shuttleworth, Born Fred Lee Robinson, joined his ancestors in our Lord on October 5, 2011, at the age of 89 in Birmingham, Alabama. And that's our story about Fred Shower, who was, to me, a strong black man, mm -hmm. and he didn't back down, and don't sound like he had any fear. Like some of these uh, civil rights workers, they just kept pressing, but some of them were afraid. <coughs> Mm -hmm. to keep on moving in with this because some of them, they went through so much violence. This mm -hmm. was a violent time. Mm -hmm. And still sometimes, you know, something I wanted to talk about too, right quick. <coughs> about, um, have you noticed we're not seeing police brutality on television lately? Yeah, because Trump's got it. He got what? He's got all the news. Everybody want to talk about him. Uh, I'm pretty sure they're... I'm, well, there was uh, something on there last night uh, about <clears throat> there was a conference on police brutality. Okay. And I think it was in California. Yeah, but you ain't seen them killing them like they have well, done in the past. Well, th there's a movement trying to get the laws changed. Thank you, because that's yeah. the only way it's going to work. Yeah. You must go through the laws, get legislatively changed, the laws change. But you do see it on the internet. Mm -hmm. Sometimes some stuff will pop on there and you just, oh my lord, what they doing, you know. Mm -hmm. But they're not showing it like they did. But what I think happened when they was doing this propaganda to me is to uh, make the uh, Latinos, Hispanic, has Hispanics, and black people to put fear in them. Mm -hmm. A form of oppression. When they was showing all that. That mm -hmm. makes, like my granddaughter told me, Grandma, I'm scared. You know, oh, I have, she didn't well, want to you know, Don't let me get I'm, Grandma, I don't want them stopping me. Well, there, there, there are those out there that are saying they ain't scared and, and let a policeman come on me like that and he got something coming. There, there's a whole lot of young men out there thinking have that mentality. Yeah, that's what we said that, about Oh, like, my goodness. They tell I, you to go to the back of the bus. <laughs> yeah, you can go to the back. But if you're walking away from them and they shoot you in the back, I mean, what? Or mm -hmm. you don't have no gun. Well, see, there's so much now that they have seen that they are aware of because they were showing a video on that conference mm -hmm. that I was telling you about. They were showing a video of uh, this young lady that was on a bicycle. And uh, they don't know exactly what she said to the policeman where he took her off the bike and really manhandled her in the wrong way. Oh, I've seen that when I was at that mall. No, oh, they, this another one? Yeah, this was another one. Okay. They talked about that one and that there was a, another there's quite a few incidents lately where the police are saying that they they had probable cause. And this one this one that's uh, just was done a few days ago, 
uh, they're going to come out and show the police his uh, his monitor that he wears. They're going to show the whole thing. The video. Because they said this woman. Camera video. That, yeah. It. This woman was six feet tall. And scared him. And, and, and well, no, she she wasn't scared. She was talking. Yeah. And they are saying that uh, the police was too brutal with her. And but where that happened at? This happened. Oh, uh, it must. Uh, I'm not sure, Is it but it recent? was. Recent. It was in a mall. Yeah, it was recent. Okay. And uh, they're saying that because this woman was tall and and she wasn't a big woman. Plus, she was white. Mm-hmm. But there, she's got a lot of uproar because of what the police did to her. She's bruised on her chin. She's bruised on. Uh, she when the police took her down, she went face down. Okay. And they said that was totally un unnecessary. But they said Did you have to see the whole video because they're only showing part of it on on YouTube. Mm -hmm. And they said that part is the brutal part. But you need to see the part. Were before that the police cam mm -hmm. and and everybody said we don't want to see that we saw what he did what he did yeah <laughs> have you ever watched uh, cops you know I'm I'm not into police movies anymore because it's not a movie it's a series yeah and sometimes it's good to watch it so you can see what they will stop you for nothing for nothing yeah yeah just to see what they do anyway mm -hmm. let's move on because we gotta roll okay we all our time is going up and so. Okay, we told our story about Dr. Reverend Shuttleworth. Mm -hmm. I mean, Reverend is, Doctor. Is, is Reverend Doctor. You put Reverend first. I think that's the way it go, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Fred Shuttleworth, uh, Vinette Carroll, who was the first black woman who, to direct on uh, Broadway, Broadway in New York, and Canadian born Viola Desmond, who happens. That's quite an accomplishment. Of uh, which one? To put her on that money. On, uh, yeah, in Canada. She'll be on the $10 bill in 2018. If you would like information about our theme song, Be, be Proud to Be Black, featuring Martin Luther King Jr. and Malcolm X, contact TP Productions at 810-962-3258. That's 810-962-3258. Be sure to watch Political Pundit Dr. George Moss every Monday at 2 p.m. on AllPointsTV.com and YouTube. Also, some of AllPointsTV.com program comes on Comcast Channel 17 every Tuesday evening from 8.30 to 9.30 p.m. And it's not that the programs that you see every week, because he wrote taste the program. And do you know he puts the Taurus Black History Corner on there? What? So you're on Channel 17. When he rotate us around and we get there. <laughs> but I appreciate it very much. As always, we'd like to say Asante, which means thanks, thanks in Swahili, to all of you who have watched our program today. And we pray that you have learned some great information yes. and to pass it on to your children. Pass it on to your children. They Amen. must know our story. We always encourage you to learn more about our story and to continue mm -hmm. to pass it on. Until next time, we want you to know and always remember that American blacks are spiritually strong and a resilient people and that no one can keep us down. Love yourself. And I, that's no joke because we've been here a long time <laughs> and they have tried to keep us down, but they can't do it. Ooh. You just got to go back and look at our story, the full story. Amen. Okay, love yourself to always be proud to be black and always keep on keeping on with us. Hotep, which means peace. peace.